The Human Genome Project is a remarkable task that has been recently completed with the intention of enhancing human life and contributing to the bright future of medicine. The study of human genetics started in the middle of the 20th century when the double helix structure of DNA was discovered by Watson and Crick. Next, scientists began sequencing DNA, and from that they were able to link certain DNA segments to human diseases, and in 1983 the mapping of the Huntington disease gene to chromosome 4 was accomplished. However, scientists were still unsure about how to address the actual disease from the linked gene. It was due to these advances, however, that the U.S. Department of Energy began the effort to sequence the entire human genome, a task that is known as the Human Genome Project and is led by James Watson. The first draft of sequencing was developed in 2000, and on April 14, 2003, the successful completion of the project was announced. This achievement allowed many valuable breakthroughs in medicine to occur, but other uses for this information emerged as well. This is where the designer baby comes into play. When we begin to manipulate certain traits through biotechnology, we lose genuine relationships and form an altered type of bond that is different from what is common to us. Many people argue that being able to choose the features of their children will allow a closer bond between parent and child because they will be more compatible and have more in common. But others say that this will, in fact, take away from the relationships that exist. In a conference titled Ethics in the Age of Genetic Engineering, Michael Sandel, professor of government at Harvard University, explores the ramifications of designing children. When asked about it, he responded, What I find objectionable about the quest for designer children, whether it's IQ or height or blonde hair or blue eyes or the ability to hear, I think the worry has something to do with the idea that part of what makes the parent-child relation special is that unlike every other relation we have, we choose our friends, we choose our spouses, based on qualities we find attractive, but we don't choose our children. He goes on to say that to turn biotechnology into an instrument not of medicine or curing or preventing disease, but an instrument of the consumer society, turning children into commodities, being able to pick and choose the genetic traits of children is morally troubling and a distinction must be made between the two. Finally, when addressed about sex selection of a child, he makes a comparison to the car industry. He argued that these practices will turn children into nothing more than a consumer good. A car is a commodity, meant to have flexibility in color and decor. But children are not, and he says that the risk of going beyond the medical use is that we will recast this relation of parents to children. Many people say that this loss of human relationship will not occur, and rather a superior race will evolve when we are able to choose the features of the next generation. But this is unrealistic to believe, because there is no proof supporting the claim that people with a certain eye color or a certain attractiveness will be happier or better in any way. Can human genetic technologies lead to a loss of beauty? While it seems as though the goal of the designer baby is to create a perfect, attractive being, there is something to be said about the uniqueness of a society that makes the world in which we live so beautiful. Each person has that special trait that contributes to the overall splendor of the world. When human genetic technologies are used to select these traits, the world will become standardized. Many argue that this selection of traits will result in greater beauty, eliminating undesired imperfections. 
but in reality it is the distinct exquisiteness of a varied people that make the world so attractive and this is a beauty that must be preserved